Okay guys, this is gonna be a quick video on creating an OSU1 NTFS bootable flash drive that we're gonna to use to do offline updates on your Xbox One. And I'm gonna have a video coming out just after this one which is gonna show you actually using the OSU1 flash drive. Now, I've done this step several times in the past in some of my other videos, but I thought it would be useful to do it in its own video so that if you're looking to do just this step, you won't have to find a time code or use one of my other files or you know basically scan through some of my other files to find this particular step. So what what we're going to do first is get a hold of our OSU1 files and what you see on the screen here this is the Xbox One or Microsoft's Xbox One troubleshooting page where you can actually go through and troubleshoot different errors that you're getting and as you go through this they'll eventually give you an OSU1 file link and I will link this particular page in the description of this video but I will also link a direct link to the osu1.zip which I have here whenever you're looking to do an offline update or repair system even if you downloaded osu1.zip in the past you need to make sure you download it again because this file gets updated every time a new Xbox One dashboard gets released so you need to make sure that you have one that is on the same version of your current console or a newer version than what's on your current console. Okay, so we're gonna say save file, and in my case, I'm gonna put it on this M Games Xbox One OSU One Drive, and I click save. Normally, that's what I'm gonna do in order to keep this video short and to be able to produce this video quickly. I'm just gonna cancel out here, but I'm gonna save it to here, and this is actually what I did a few weeks ago, or now it's over a month ago. This download I did back in March, on March 4th, is the same exact OSU One .zip. Okay, but pretend I click save here. Okay, and we'll let that download. It's a fairly large file. You can see it's it's about four and a half gigabytes in size. So I would recommend at a minimum getting an eight gigabyte flash drive. Obviously anything larger than that would be fine as well. And once you have it downloaded, we'll want to insert our flash drive. So here's my flash drive. I think I have a 16 gig one. Oh, no, nope. I have a 32 gig one. Okay, so you want to make sure it's formatted as NTFS. Generally, when you buy these things, they're formatted as FAT. So you want to use one of the tools here. I don't know if you can actually do it from the tools anymore. It doesn't look like you can. So I'd say the easiest way to format this flash drive is to open a disk manager or a disk management. So just to show you this really quick, you would want to do start run and type diskmgmt.msc and click OK. You might have a slightly different layout. I'm using something called Classic Shell, so it gives you a Windows 7 menu on Windows 10. But if we use Cartana here, we can also say uh, diskmgmt.msc. And that would also work as well. We could click this. Okay, so we want to find our flash drive here. So in this case, it's our removable drive. And again, here's the, the proper size. And at this point, we can right-click the partition, and we have the option of format. And it's going to warn you that if you format, it's going to be lost. So we're going to click yes. And here's where I just called it OSU. Um, you could call it OSU1. You could call it anything you want. But the important bit here is to make sure the file system is NTFS and leave the allocation unit size to default and say perform a quick format and click OK. Again, I'm not actually going to click OK because I already have this ready to go and I'm trying to keep things quick here. Okay, so once we have our F drive partitioned as NTFS, we'll go back here and we can actually see I already have the OSU1 extracted onto this F drive. However, we want to do it, let's see here, let me back up. So we're going to go to where we downloaded our OSU1.zip. And I recommend using 7-zip for unzipping archives. You can use whatever method you're most comfortable with. But what I generally do here is say open archive with 7-zip. I'll also put a link in the description of where you can download 7-zip. And inside this zip file is a single folder. And so we don't want to just copy the entire zip file to the F drive in this case. We want this folder only. So in this case, we click extract. And we'd want to change the directory to be our F drive. 
and we want it to go here. So we click OK to this. And we want to copy it to F, and we'd say OK to that. Now I'm going to say OK. It's going to immediately complain that all these files are already here. So normally, if you have a blank formatted drive, it would already start the copy here and be good to go. So I'm going to say no to all here because I don't actually want to copy. You would want to say yes to all normally. Um, I'm going to say no to all just to speed up the process there. OK. And uh, so there we go. So now we have our contents on our flash drive here. And here's our system update partition. You can see now on, on the, uh, if, you've, if you're familiar with this at all in the past, a lot less files in this directory. Now there's a bunch of language files. Um, it still functions exactly the same, even though it looks different. So don't be too concerned with this. But the last thing we're going to want to do here is now eject our flash drive. And now it's safe to remove. And we can basically take this drive and put it in our Xbox One. So basically we have our Xbox One here and we'd want to use, we can use any slot. So we can use the left side slot here um, if we can find it. Um, and then there are, there are two ports in the back that you can use as well. They should all work the same. But if you did everything correctly, when you actually get to the troubleshoot menu, the offline update icon shouldn't be grayed out. You should be able to select it. If it's grayed out, then you did something wrong with this process and you might want to go back and make sure the system update directory is actually on the flash drive. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys out and I should have some more videos coming really soon. Thanks for watching.